Today, we are fixing an old MacBook Pro and installing a new solid state drive. I got this new solid state drive from Amazon and it was dirt cheap at $30 for 256 gigabytes. Not too bad. Now the reason I'm doing this project is I'm trying to revive an old computer that I haven't used in seven years. It was on the fritz before. Now that I know more about computers, I want to see what I can do to revive my old computer. Now here's the problem that I have. The screen will just flash and turn off and the computer will restart if I try to do two processes at the same time or you know sometimes it just happens randomly. Before we change out the solid state drive, I'm gonna back up all the files that I care about and I'm gonna do a disk speed test with Blackmagic's free software. Now it looks like I'm getting 64, which is pretty darn low for a read write speed. To get started, what I'm gonna do is unplug my Mac from the wall, I'm gonna flip it over, and using a Phillips head screwdriver, I'm gonna take out the screws. Now, some screws are longer than others. Make sure you care about where you put the screws, otherwise you will lose them. This MacBook Pro inside I recently cleaned out. If you have an older MacBook Pro inside and you haven't cleaned it in years, I really suggest you do that beforehand. Now the hard drive is put in the computer with just two screws on a bridge that you can easily take out and then you get direct access to the drive. Now there's four pins, a little hex screws on the hard drive that you're gonna take off the old one and put on the new one. These are gonna help it sit within the case of the MacBook. I removed these screws using my Star Pentalope screwdriver that I got off of Amazon. I specifically bought this kit so I could clean the inside of my Retina MacBook and thankfully I had it because it worked perfectly on this part as well. The four pins in place, I'm now gonna connect the brand new hard drive to the computer, put it snug in place, and then put the bridge plate back over, and then we're ready to seal this bad boy up. Remember why I told you to be safe about those screws? Well, some of them actually fell out and I'm not happy about that, so uh, my computer's gonna have a few missing screws, but you know what, it's still gonna work. Maybe I'll get some replacements in the future. Now that we have everything connected, I'm gonna flip it over, plug it back in and turn it on. As you can see, we get a question mark on a file and now we are gonna reinstall our OS. I spent a whole day working and trying to figure out how to do this. The last time I had to do this was probably 12 years ago on my G4 MacBook. Uh, so from here, you're gonna connect to the internet and the OS of the Mac has a backup where they're gonna help you reinstall your operating system so you can get back up and running without having to worry about an external source for that operating system information. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the hard drive and I'm going to format it uh, Mac OS journaled so it's perfect for the computer. Once it's formatted, I'm gonna be able to create the OS on this hard drive and get up and running. And now that we are up and running, uh, boot time is for sure faster already. If we look in, we can see that we have lots of free space on the hard drive. Let's go to the Blackmagic speed test and you can see that, uh, I mean, the speed is five times faster. That is a super big improvement. Now, going back to the main reason why I actually had to even fix the computer in the first place is that it intermittently just shuts off. I did some more research and realized that it might actually be a main problem with 2010 MacBooks with the graphics card switching, making the computer have a kernel problem. My fix here is that if I keep it on the internal card, then it won't be shutting down on me and I just have to forfeit my usage of the other graphics card. I'm sure that there are other ways to fix it. Maybe you know, drop a link in the comments. However, today this works, so that's what I'm gonna go with. So comparing this to my modern computers, we have much better screen, retina. With this one, you can see the pixels pretty obviously. There's a lot more reflection in the image. However, we do excel in one category and that's IO output inputs. Like, come on, look at all this. We got an ethernet port, 
We have SD. This is a computer that can hook up to a lot of things with ease. Come on, Apple. And if you flip it over, you see we have a full CD drive, which today is still something good to have as a backup. If I do get media from a client that's older, I need to be able to read that media. So this computer is gonna be good for that. And the best part of this computer is the MagSafe charger. It has saved me countless times getting up and just snapping off instead of ruining or bending my cables. Other than that, for this computer being a decade old, it holds up pretty well. I mean, I'm watching YouTube right here, no problem. I can't do everything. And as a big test for this computer, I downloaded Premiere Pro 2020 and I edited this whole video on this computer. It did take me a couple hours more than it would have if I edited it on my PC because of rendering times and waiting for things to render out so I can properly view. However, it wasn't a huge hindrance, so I would say the computer is alright capable 10 years later in 2020. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button, and thank you for watching.